Welcome back to Our Chicago Today. I'm Judy Sue. Joining me now is Dr. Royce Lee, an associate professor of psychiatry and behavioral neural science with the University of Chicago Medicine. And we're talking about coping day by day with all that we're dealing with during this political turmoil, the pandemic, and how it has changed our lives. A, a good morning, doctor. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Glad to be here. Uh, Dr. Lee, so when we're talking about stress and anxiety, I think those are pretty much understatements uh, these days. I, I want to know how would you describe where we are right now as, as a nation, as a state, as neighbors to each other in terms of how stressed we are? Um, we have actual data about this, so that we always want to look at the data. And the data are pretty clear um, that compared to 2019 rates of depression and anxiety, in the population in the United States are up about 20%. And all sorts of things that go along with that, like substance abuse and suicide, there are also some uh, concerning trends. So I think we can say factually that there are signs of distress in the population. And these numbers uh, really coincide with the scientific understanding of the effect of pandemics on a large population. And essentially, we can sum it up as the longer a pandemic goes on and the longer shelter in place goes on, um, the more difficulty people will tend to have. And subjectively, yeah, that seems to be true for both myself and my, my, my friends and family. And I think many people are, are noticing that. So if you're, if you're noticing that, it's real. Um, you know, we don't want to panic because we also know um, from previous research that the population will recover quite rapidly. And Dr. Lee, obviously there is a range of emotions running through a lot of people right now with the pandemic, unemployment, of course, mm -hmm. kids uh, learning from home. And, and then there's that political tsunami that we talked about. It feels like one thing after another. How do we know then if what we're feeling is quote unquote normal and what is not, that maybe we're not managing it as well? How do we know that? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And so um, the way I might think of this is, you know, every stress gives us opportunities and they all, it can also take things away from us. And one way um, of staying resilient, you know, resiliency is how uh, we stay strong in the face of adversity, is through what we call reframing. And reframing is essentially um, taking the opportunity to change how we look at a question uh, because that can sometimes help us cope. So I would take this opportunity to reframe what we consider normal, right? So we may get concerned if we're, quote, normal or not. Now, from the, from the neuroscience perspective, if there was a, there was a manual uh, for our brain that we got when we were born, it would say something like depression and anxiety are normal parts of brain function, and so is recovery. So in my book, you know, even if you have depression or anxiety and you get treatment and you recover. I think of that as normal. When you hear that people are posting on social media to all of my friends, if we disagree on this, insert political view here, we don't have to be friends or family members stop talking to each other over what's going on on the news. What is your advice on how people should navigate that? Uh, my own biological research has focused on how the experience of trauma causes the release of stress hormones and these stress hormones, we usually think of them as causing fear and anxiety. But really important here, um, one of the most powerful effects they can have is on decreasing trust or causing a kind of paranoia. So again, looking at the data, we would expect during a pandemic of you know um, historic proportions that that stress would lead to mistrust in society. And we're seeing it, right? So I think there's another problem with the mistrust, in addition to, you know, causing some drama. Um, it deprives us of one of the most important sources of resilience, which is, of course, our family and friends. So I think the, the burden is on all of us, you know, including those in social media, to recognize that we would expect increased mistrust in society. And, you know, as individuals, we need to take a step back and pause and think, where is this mistrust coming from? Because in fact, you know, all of the issues today, um, they've been there for a long time. One thing I've noticed is you know, my children are in CPS and CPS has done a great job of casting current controversies in a historical light. And that's given our family an opportunity to discuss these things, you know, with my children, uh, hearing about um, these historical debates in society that have been going on for hundreds of years. 
And that's, that's really been helpful. The other thing I, I'm going to point out um, is that uh, local news, I've been watching a lot of local TV news during the pandemic and unrest, and I found that to be a very welcome um, break from the more intense tone of social media. So again, finding sources of trusted information and being able to give that trust to others is really important during these times. Thank you so much for walking us through that. All good information to keep in mind during this time. Thank you. Thank you. And that's going to do it for our Chicago this morning. We want to thank you for joining us, and we certainly hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.